Good morning, everyone. We are so excited to have you here with us today for our virtual farm tour, and it is National Ag Day. Happy National Ag Day. We've brought you here virtually to a farm in Pennsylvania. I want to go over a couple things before I bring Farmer Ed on. Here's the important things to know. You can ask questions using the question and answer box. I'll be checking them and relay them to Farmer Ed live while we're chatting. The other thing that I want you to know about today's tour is that we are recording this all live. So this is all really happening. We do our best to make sure there's no technology glitches, but sometimes some things happen. We'll do our best to get right back on if that does. The last thing I want to tell you is that today's tour has a lesson plan that goes with it, in which we talk about sustainable nutrition. So you'll see that on today's deep dive dairy tour, we're really focused on not only how sustainable dairy is, but how we sustainably feed our cows and protect the environment. Without further ado, though, I'm going to toss it over to Farmer Ed. So Farmer Ed, tell us about the farm. Good morning. My name is Ed Facer. Uh, currently today, we're at Star Rock Farms in Conestoga, PA, which is in Lancaster County. Uh, at this location where our cows are, we currently milk about 1,500 cows, which are Holsteins and Jerseys. Our cows are making about one or about 10 gallons of milk a day right at the current moment. We ship two trailer loads of milk a day. So they'll see those big tractor trailers going on the road. We ship two of those a day. <laughs> Uh, our farm is farming about 983 acres on this location to feed our cows. So if you want to think about it, that's 744 football fields in area. Our crops of those 744 football fields is producing 2,500 school buses worth of feed. So if you want to think about it in a large scale, 2,500 school buses of feed is what it takes per year to produce the milk at the highest quality on our farm here. We still good? So all that, we are here in front of the parlor, uh, which we currently milk 20 cows on either side three times a day, uh, which takes all day long to milk three times a day, 1,500 cows. Wow, Ed, that is so cool. It seems like you have a lot going on here on the farm. And I know you said a lot of different numbers explaining that to us. But then what about people? How many people work here? So Star Rock Farms is a third generation family farm. We have on the dairy, we have 22 people that are on payroll and all of them are family members and have families at home. So we are 100% family owned or family owned and operated farm here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. That is absolutely awesome. I know that you guys work really hard to, to take care of your cows and protect the environment. So with that, I think it'd be really cool if we checked out a little bit of background. I know some of our students here are probably seeing um, some of these cows in the background, but before we jump into more detail about the crops and how you guys sustainably feed your cows today, how about we check out a video showing a little bit of background on that? Does that, does that sound good, Ed? Sounds good to me. You'll get to see it all. All You're right, seeing, we're going to show you guys uh, a video. A glimpse of the cow uh, facility where the cows spend all their day eating, sleeping, resting, chewing their food. Uh, cows spend about 10 hours a day chewing their food and eating, so it's a huge portion of their day. Also, you can see some uh, very extremely comfortable stalls for the cows to lay in where their beds are made every day, laying on cool, dry sand. It's like playing at the beach every day. Also, our stalls are flexible in size uh, differential for each animal that can go smaller or bigger, depending on the size of the cow. So then she has the most comfortable bed every day. As you can see, the cows are laying down, chewing their cud, enjoying life as they're laying on the cool, dry sand. The cows spend about 10 hours a day chewing their, their cud and eating. So 
you can see that the importance of a comfortable dry bed for them to relax and lay in. Also, you can see we have cows, cow back scratchers, the personal massager of cows um, to keep cows clean and enjoy, or, and enjoy their day as they're getting their back scratched just like everyone else does. As you're seeing on the screen, just to give you some perspective of the size and scale uh, of the housings that the cows live in. Wow, Ed, that's all really cool. Look at how comfortable those cows look. Between fans and sprinklers to keep them cool in the summertime? That's pretty awesome. But I see these cows have a lot of food to eat in front of them. Can you share a little bit about how you feed your cows and maybe some of the cool ways that you feed them? So our cow diets are balanced properly and accurately, just like your school lunches are, which makes the best meal possible for everyone to enjoy and consume. So one thing we do at Star Rock Farms from a sustainability standpoint is uh, we feed a food waste product, which is liquid ice cream before it's frozen. As you can see, it's 42 degrees pre-frozen ice cream waste from Turkey Hill. So what would happen to this ice cream if you guys didn't feed it to your cows? Be disposed of uh, through a digester, an anaerobic digester on another dairy farm. Instead, we've uh, decided to feed it to cows. Okay, Ed, so what nutrients do cows get from ice cream? How does this fuel their day? It provides them with a fat source, a sugar source, um, and then a little, a little energy and a little protein, but it also is a liquid, so it keeps the feed all stuck together, which is, makes the total mixed ration, which is the TMR, uh, to bind that product together so then every mouthful that the cow eats is perfectly balanced um, and she's not sorting through small particles, particles to big particles. It's all the same throughout. Okay, so you basically take all the food your cows need and you put it in a big giant blender and mix it up together to make sure that they eat their vegetables. So they're getting like a smoothie or like a tossed salad would be the closest thing we would eat to what cows get to eat every day. So Ed, cows are amazing recyclers, making sure that they use up food that we wouldn't otherwise use. How much does this actually save you guys on the farm by feeding ice cream? So by feeding this product, um, which is a, a waste product, we're able to save about two and a two to a half pounds of purchase feed a day per cow. Uh, so on 1,500 cows, it's a very big number that we're not purchasing in. We're reusing from a sustainability standpoint uh, of not disposing it. Uh, there's two loads a day. So these cows are gonna consume uh, two tons of ice cream in their diet. Uh, not a piece, but across the board for this uh, 250 cow group. So it's about, um, it's uh, about eight dry matter pounds per cow, or it's about 12, 12 pounds per cow per day of ice cream. That's so cool, Ed. I see the feed being delivered on the camera screen now. Looks like those cows are pretty content. I think you're going to show us some of those feed ingredients when we hop back live. So let's go back to the live. This is an aerial video uh, of our farm where we are currently standing to give you guys some perspective of how big in size our facility is where we house all the cows. In the group background, uh, you can see the corn that is planted. Uh, currently, it's not planted, but we'll show you what piece of equipment does plant the corn here in the spring as that's a task that's done every year here coming up in the next few weeks. We farm about 1,000 acres, which feed all of these cows that you will see throughout this today on this tour. As you can see, our farm is located right next to a large uh, body of water, the Susquehanna River. So water quality is of most uh, importance for us, where we keep buffer areas from the main, air, main cow area down to their stream to protect the highest quality water. Wow, Ed, that was all really, really cool. 
So we saw in that video, Ed, how you're using recycled feed or feed components that not uh, that basically humans wouldn't be able to consume to feed to cows. How did you get the idea to feed ice cream to cows? Uh, we were able to get the idea of ice cream for cows because Turkey Hill is about two miles away from our dairy here in Lancaster. Uh, so we, through relationships in the community, uh, we realized that this was a huge need, uh, an opportunity for us to feed to cows to save from a dollar standpoint, but also from a feed tonnage standpoint that we would either have to plant and or purchase. Uh, so we were able to achieve this by dealing with Turkey Hill, signing contracts and becoming uh, their sole receiver of their ice cream waste, uh, which is what we feed to cows for loads a week right now. That is absolutely incredible. And I know, Ed, we've got some cool equipment behind you. So beyond feeding byproducts, obviously, you guys grow a lot of your own crops to feed your cows. So tell us a little bit about the crops that you grow and the piece of equipment that we're looking at. So yeah, like I said, we plant uh, 983 acres on this location to feed our cows. Uh, in the fall, we, we, we harvest the corn that was planted in the spring, and then we plant uh, cereal rye, which you saw in the video, the fields all look green like a lawn. So here in the next month or so, we will actually harvest that cereal rye, which was planted in, in October of last year uh, for our spring harvest. Uh, and then after that, we will use this piece of equipment that you are seeing behind me uh, and plant our corn, which would then be harvested in September. So it's always a, a year and a couple month process to get a year's worth of feed um, because we are using 100% of our acres 365 days a year uh, with planting a cover crop in the fall, which would be over winter and then harvested in the spring. So in doing so, we are sustainable because 983 acres are used twice a year to produce all the feed for our cows at this site. Wow, Ed, that's super cool. We did have one question come in live that was asking if you guys actually have any other animals that you grow feed for besides just cows. So at this location, we're only growing for our milking cows, but at our other locations, we do have a large cash cropping operation, which we are producing grain corn and soybeans and wheat, which would then be used for feed of pigs and chickens and beef cattle all across the state of Pennsylvania and also of our own. But on this site, we're just growing crops for our milking cows. Wow, that's awesome. And I know you said earlier you do 983 acres, and that's 744 football fields. So now this piece of equipment behind you, you're telling me this piece of equipment is going to cover 744 football fields. It looks like a big piece of equipment. Ed, can you show us how big it is? Stand next to it. Wow. Okay, so that's going to do a lot of work. So, yeah, this, this piece alone will cover all. So this piece alone will cover all 744 football fields. And as you can see, the tire is the same size as I am. So it takes big equipment to cover all this ground in a very efficient manner uh, to do it as, as timely as possible because we're trying to achieve the highest quality corn and soybeans and wheat and cereal rye for our highest quality feed for our cows that you saw in that earlier video. Uh, that's awesome. So now what about all these crops that you're growing? How are we fertilizing them? So our crops are fertilized 100% with our own manure, which the cows are producing every day, which then we have stored and then we, ap we apply in the spring and fall before the corn and also before the cereal ride, which is the biggest nutrient source of our crops, which is in-house. So we are self-producing our own nutrients and fertilizer for our crops, which makes us full circle all the way around. That's absolutely incredible and so cool that you guys are able to use all that manure as a fertilizer. 
Okay, Ed, so I, I see this big piece of equipment as well, and I'm guessing there's some technology involved in this piece of equipment. So can you tell us a little bit about how maybe some people think farming doesn't use a lot of technology, but I think you you can tell me it's different than that, right? So yeah, all of our equipment uh, is GPS located and driven. Uh, so basically your Tesla of agriculture. Uh, we have the ability to hit a button and the tractor will drive, uh, not autonomously, but you will be able to drive precisionly straight. Uh, when you're covering 744 football fields, if you're off by a foot uh, across one, one pass and you're off by a foot every time, you end up with a lot of feet extra um, that didn't get covered. So all this technology is integrated that it is the most precision uh, as possible. And I'm sure you did see on the corn planter, it says uh, precision ag right on the corn planter. So we are trying to be as precise as possible with all that. Now, the other side to be efficient with our technology is we are no till. So we do not go through the field and actually till the soil. Our topsoil is maintained intact. And this planter uh, is designed to precisionly plant the seed in the existing topsoil that we're not overturning and um, disrupting that soil structure that we've worked so hard to develop. Wow, that's super cool. So on our secondary cam, uh, Ed, we're seeing the inside of that tractor and there's like a whole TV screen and joystick. It almost looks like a computer game. I mean, to, to operate this, it's uh, it looks like it's like there's a lot involved with doing that. Do you have people on the farm who just run this type of equipment? Is it a specialty job? Do you need a degree to do it? So the operators that run the corn planters, uh, there's a select few that run them. They are our highest trained. Uh, they do not have to have a specialty degree, but they work hard uh, and they enjoy what they do every day. Uh, and then they've been selected to be our corn planter operators, just like we have uh, chopper operators or combine operators. Everyone has a specialty job, uh, which they fit and they work the best at. Uh, so it's just a learn, learn by process uh, degree, if you want to call it. Uh, you learn as you're working uh, and you're working every day to be better at what you were. So the technology that you're seeing is a GPS monitor and screen so you're actually seeing where you're going in real time uh as you are planting the corn in the fields uh that are all precisionally mapped as well wow that is really really interesting and we've had uh, questions come in which you've answered actually which is great is there special types of training for driving so i'm assuming you guys actually provide that training here right so if, if students are interested in this they gotta they could come here and learn sort of a thing Yep. So we, uh, we train all in house. Um, the senior operators will teach the new operators and you just, uh, trial by air and see who gets to sit in the seat. The fastest is what it comes down to. So hard work, hard work and dedication pay off. Okay. One cool thing Ed, that I think you should share is, is how much would one of these tractors cost to buy? So, uh, when you have the opportunity to buy them, uh, this piece of machinery right here would be about a quarter of a million dollars, uh, with all the technology that we have installed in them. Uh, so about 10 times what your family, uh, minivan costs. If you want to think about it that way, you could have 10 minivans or one tractor pick what you want. Wow. I, that's some tough choices there, <laughs> but I think, I think you need the tractor instead of the 10 minivans. <laughs> Okay, Ed, so we've seen the planting. We know that you're using the manure. <clears throat> what happens, though, uh, come fall? Obviously, you're going to plant in the next couple of weeks here. How do we get it off the field? You want to show us that piece of equipment next? Yeah, so uh, once everything is planted in the field in the fall, we would move to our next piece of equipment, which is here. Fabulous, Ed. We're following you right up there and seeing the outside of it, too. 
pretty cool. So this piece of equipment here would be uh, the harvesting mechanism, the combine, which would harvest the wheat, the soybeans, and the corn um, in the summer and fall, which we would then uh, store in our bins and use uh, to either feed our cows or to feed pigs and chickens and steers, just like I spoke of earlier. Very cool, Ed. We've got some questions rolling in here. So we had, uh, I know you told us about some other locations and other animals. We had another uh, individual ask if you raise all your own calves too. Yes. Yeah, so we, all of our animals are raised here for the dairy. Um, not on this exact site, but within a few miles of here. Uh, all the baby or all the calves are born here and then we move them to where they are in the, the young, young animal housing, and then they get to grow up and then come back here to the dairy where they produce that highest quality milk for everyone to enjoy. Very cool. So we've had another question come in about how much uh, will you harvest with this piece of equipment? So if you give us maybe some pounds or some, some relevant amounts that we could relate to. Um, so this, this piece of equipment, uh, will cover about a third of our harvesting acres, um, at our, at our other locations, which would do about a hundred acres a day at, if we're doing corn, we're about 200 bushels to the acre of corn. So if anyone can do quick math. You're about two, or you're you're about two hundred thousand bushels, um, to, or that this machine would be doing. So when we're covering all our acres, you're able to do um, about a million bushels of corn total uh, when we're covering it all. But this this piece of machinery would only do about a third of them. We have multiple of these this machines. Wow, that's all super interesting. We had another question actually about the planter of what's the working width of the planter? So our, our planters are all 16 rows, which uh, equivalates to about 40 feet um, per pass across the field. Um, which matches the combine. So the combine, the planters plant 16 rows and the combines harvest 16 rows of corn at a time or uh, 40 feet wide of soybeans or wheat. Awesome, Ed. We had another question come in. That's how many hours do you work a day to get all this done? Uh, when it's go time, it's go time and we work all hours of the day and all hours of the night. Um, working in agriculture, you are, you are at the mercy of the weather. So if it's a nice dry spring, everything can get done in a manageable manner of 12 to 14 hour days. If it's a very wet spring and we've got to get the seed in the ground to plant to, so the crop will grow, uh, so then we can harvest in the fall, we'll work 24 hours a day uh, until the job gets done. So we, uh, as farmers, we're willing to work as little or as much as we have to do to get the, get the job done from planting to harvesting to doing, spreading the manure, all aspects of the job. Wow, that is all super, super cool. So, Ed, one other question that came in is... Um, with these types of equipment, I know, you know, we talked about before, maybe having a career working in driving for you guys, for example, but these look like pretty complex pieces of equipment. I'm assuming that there's a career even just in fixing and repairing these types of equipment. Yes, these, uh, this uh, equipment is very complex. Uh, the inner workings are extremely detailed uh, that we have trained specialties uh, employees here to work on them, but also 
from uh, the dealerships. Uh, they have even higher trained people to fix the components that we might not be able to do internally. Uh, so all aspects of these equipment are uh, trained specialties, whether it's an operator, whether it's a mechanic, or whether it's the, the guy putting it all back together in the spring when they uh, go to start harvesting again. Awesome. We had another question come in actually about what you mentioned, which is cereal rye. So if that, uh, you know, you guys use that as a cover crop and what's the benefit maybe to rotating crops or having a different cover crop from maybe the crop that you'll plant in the spring. Can you talk about that? So we, in, in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we use cereal rye, um, just because of the growing season. Uh, if you were further south, you might be able to use a triticale or a different different type of cover crop. But we use a cover crop from a soil, soil health standpoint and also from the ability to keep every acre covered from a runoff standpoint. So like I mentioned, we are a no-till situation. So we try to keep every acre covered in a growing crop 365 days a year. Uh, so then we have the ability to no-till our next crop in. So rotating from corn to cereal rye back to corn gives us the ability to always have a different crop growing, uh, which is doing the best thing possible for the soil and also from the highest quality product of crop that we are producing. That's incredible. So we've talked a lot about... Um you know, the different equipment that you're using to both plant and then harvest, but obviously all of that is in service to feeding the cows. Now, I know we talked about corn and some of the other things that you'll harvest, but maybe I know our secondary cam is showing us all of the feed components, Ed. So can you tell us actually about the whole TMR? So we, we had that term thrown around in our video. You want to tell us what a TMR is and what all those components are of the cow's feed? Yeah, so TMR is the total mixed ration, which is the, the, the diet that is uh, prepared for the cows every day. So as you can see, we have hay, straw, protein mix, um, which is your minerals, your vitamins, um, and also a protein source. And then we have ground corn, which is just whole kernels ground to a very small uh, particle size. And then we have the cereal rye, which is fermented from last year so that would have been harvested in 2021 and then we have corn silage which was harvested in fall of 2021 which is fermented at this point now um and so if you were to combine all those ingredients together that is what the diet is for cows to consume every day um and just like technology in this equipment the the tmr is mixed to the highest level of accuracy to produce the highest quality uh, precision for those cows to eat every day. Uh, so their diet does not change very much from day to day. That's super interesting. So we see our, our secondary cam just made a little impromptu TMR for us to check out what that would look like, which is pretty neat. So now remind me again, Ed, how many cows are you feeding in total? So maybe we'll even say animals in total. Give us mature cows as well as calves. So in total, um, as of today, we're feeding right around 3,600 animals um, between baby calves to yearling animals to mature cows to dry cows um, is right around 3,500 animals total start to finish in all aspects of the farm. Very interesting. So we had another question come in. Do cows ever get treats? Like, like, you know, we think about like dog treats or some other things. Do they ever get a special treat, for example, or maybe, you know, like sometimes we indulge in a little extra dessert. Do the cows ever get that opportunity or are they on a pretty healthy diet? So they're on a strict healthy diet, um, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. They live the life of a gourmet buffet because they get the life of the highest quality feed 24 hours a day. So they don't have to indulge in a little extra sugar snack at night. They get to have that beautiful balanced diet all day long, um, which is the, the perfect way to enjoy it. 
Makes sense to me. So, uh, Ed, we had another question come in, which is asking more so about, uh, you know, your farm's plans for the future. Obviously, it's National Ag Day, and we're going deep dive into a lot of the crops and acreage and sustainability. But so what's the plan for the future, Ed? Do you want to continue to grow the farm? How do you guys think about that and approach that? So our plan for the future is we want to be good stewards to the land um, and also be able to help be the small portion of the world that feeds the world. So uh, there's 2% of the American population is farmers producing the crops that are producing the food for everyone to enjoy and consume. So that's what we've, we wake up and strive every day to do is be able to be a part of that 2% of the population that is feeding the rest of the 98% of the population. So the future holds uh, being good stewards to the land, uh, working with technology to uh, be adaptive to ever changing uh, advancements and uh, issues that arise in the world uh, to be able to keep producing that highest quality product uh, and also grow to be better of what we're doing, uh, not just be set in stone of how we're farming so as you can see this combine has tracks on it we decided to be adaptive and grow and have tracks on our equipment uh for better better traction but also less compaction when we're in the field so we're trying to do the best thing possible uh, we will maintain that mindset uh going forward of how we can be better stewards to the land and also produce that highest quality product that's super interesting. So even really small choices like what types of wheels I'm going to put on a tractor add up to preserving topsoil, preserving that whole ecosystem and, and all that. That's really interesting. So you guys can do those small changes over time, right? They don't all have to be maybe all at once. Correct. Like the, the planter tractor has tires on it, but the combines have tracks on it. So over time, we are slowly, slowly adapting some technology uh, to make those changes. It doesn't have to be a light switch that happens today. Um, we're slowly adapting to make the better, better choices for the, for the ground, for the planet, for how we're harvesting and planting. So it's a slow process that changes every day. Okay, Ed, we did have one last question that I'd love for you to answer come in, and it is, have you ever gotten stuck even with the tracks on? <laughs> yes, we, <laughs> the tracks are not bulletproof. They will get stuck. Um, and that might be operator error, or it might just be, we want to see if we can do it. So yes, you can still get stuck with tracks. They're not, they're not perfect. I, I, I believe it. So Ed, we did have a, a one last question coming in. We're having lots of questions come in about the cows and some of the other side of things, which I, I will tell and remind folks. We will answer all the questions, the cow questions on the 1 p.m. tour um, and really kind of deep dive into that. But uh, some of our viewers wanted to know, you know, where where would they see your milk? You know, where would they find products that maybe include your milk? Can you share with us where they might be able to to find some of that? So most of our milk stays local here in um, Southeast PA. Uh, if you are in the Pennsylvania area and you are at a Rudder's convenience store, our milk goes to Rudders. Our milk also goes to a butter facility, which would be Lando Lakes Butter. Um, so our milk is in a fluid environment, but also in a butter product. So you might see our milk or our milk being used as butter uh, in your school lunches where they're using butter. Or if you're traveling around Southeast PA and you stop at a Rudders, our milk would be uh, in that component of the Rudders milk there as well. Very cool. So Ed, maybe before we finish up, if you want to come down and show us some of these, uh, the cutest new additions that we have down here, just as a little uh, sneak peek for this afternoon's tour of seeing some cows. So Ed, if you want to uh, get people excited about this afternoon's tour and share with us a couple of interesting facts about cows, we've got, you know, do your, uh, do you name your cows? So you can see here, here's our two newest additions from last night. Um, one Holstein and one Jersey. 
Uh, like I said, we're milking Holsteins and jerseys on this site. Um, the jerseys produce a uh, high fat and protein milk when the Holsteins are producing a large volume milk. So we feel that the two together makes that perfect blend of high quality, high volume, and also a high fat and protein content. Um, as for naming our animals, as you can see, this one is 6986, her number is. In last year, we were about at 5,340. So in the course of a year, we're just over 1,200 animals um, born. So not every single one of them gets named. We'd run out of names real quick, but all the special ones that we enjoy and love do get uh, a personalized name other than a star rock and their number name. Very cool. Okay, Ed, before we wrap it up, I have to know what is your favorite dairy product to enjoy and what should everyone go enjoy on today, National Ag Day? So my favorite dairy product is an ice cold glass of chocolate milk. Um, so everyone should definitely be getting a glass of chocolate milk today at school lunch. And when you get home from uh, school, get a nice glass of chocolate milk. We love that. Thank you so much, Ed. We're really grateful that you all joined us today for today's deep dive tour. Again, the focus of today was really to look at sustainable nutrition and how our farmers are both producing a sustainable product and sustainably feeding their cows. Now, if you want the full-blown overview of the dairy, join us at 1 p.m. for the 1 p.m. tour. We are super excited to have you guys on that tour later. Also, don't forget, you have two more opportunities to join live or virtual farm tours, one in April and one in May. Our next upcoming tour will be in April, and you can register for that online, the same place you registered for this tour. So thank you again for joining us. Be sure to check out the replay on YouTube, and we'll see you soon. See you.